Hey, what's up with you guys? I um, hope you guys are well. I wanted to uh, focus on the differences from a liquidity provider standpoint between Uniswap V1 and V2. Got quite a few questions about should I migrate, migrate my liquidity? Does it, does it make sense? So I'm here on uniswapri.com, a tool that allows you to, uh, to manage and track your liquidity. Probably some of you are already using it. And uh, I made a video um, a few days ago announcing that the tool now support Uniswap V2. So just to give you an example, if you invest in the new version of the protocol, you're gonna see your pools here with a v Uniswap V2 icon. And then by clicking on them, you're gonna see again, like this uh, Uniswap V2 icon, you're gonna see all the analysis for your return, your investment. Now, I wanted to, to give a, I mean, I did this before in another video, but I wanted to, again, focus a little bit on the difference between V1 and V2. Like, is really V2 better for a liquidity provider? Now, I think it's important to, to define, you know, what are the goals of a liquidity provider? In my view, at the end of the day, like most people that are investing on Uniswap, they want a return, right? They're doing that to, uh, they provide a service via Uniswap to um, essentially an exchange service. They want to get uh, remunerated for that. So if that's the goal of the liquidity provider, um, I'm not sure I see like that 10x improvement on between V1 and V2 for them. Um, meaning like the, the, let's see what, again, what the, what the benefits, what the changes are. So um, there is the option of uh, having ERC20 to ERC20 pair, which means like you can, you know, if, if you're a liquidity provider, you don't want that much exposure to Ethereum, you can just put in couples and pairs of ERC20 tokens. Now, from the conversation I had like last year, a few months ago with big investors, they were looking into DeFi and specifically into, into Uniswap. Their problem was actually the opposite. They didn't want exposure to ERC20 tokens, but rather they wanted exposure to, to Ethereum, right? So that may or may not be a change that, you know, you guys care about. Uh, there is a bunch of other technical improvements, but they are more, in my view, either for the users, right? In terms of flash swaps and price oracles, or, or uh, in general, like for, yeah, the security of the platform. But I think also V1 was pretty simple and pretty secure. There were some exploit, but they were on pretty sketchy pools anyway. So, yeah, so th these are, I mean, I, I would say uh, incremental improvements. And then, I mean, if you really care about the returns, the other, the other things to consider is that the, you know, Unisop will be, the team will be able to reduce the fee from 0.3% to 0.25%. Uh, as a path to sustainability, so essentially 0.05% will go to the Uniswap team, which personally, I think that's fair, that's correct, I mean, it's fine, like, they've been working, they've been creating all this, they need to maintain it, they have expenses, so uh, finding a business model for them, and nothing, I have nothing against it, per se, uh, but, like, if, you know, that would mean right away a 16% reduction in the in the inflows of fees to liquidity providers. So now the question is like, will the liquidity migrate from one to the other? Uh, it's to be seen, right? So if we check the liquidity right now in this uh, comparison website, we'll see that 35% of liquidity is already locked in V2, so already migrated, it's a third. It's a pretty meaningful percentage, to be honest. And then 65% is still in V1. If you look at, I think like the big driver for liquidity providers to move will be volumes. And again, like the yield of one uh, version to the other will, be, and, and the comparison between the two will really, you know, depends on the circumstances of the pool that you look into. So uh, meaning like the volume, how big the pool is in the two, you know, V1 and V2. So I plan to, by the way, create a new swap or I, I comparison website where you can see the, um, the yield of both V1 and V2, make choices. That's, you know, way days away or may, maybe you know weeks away just to be safe but that's also coming so you know uh stay tuned for that uh, right now the volumes are still pretty bigger on um, uniswap v1 versus v2 like six million one million and then we need to you know make a discount for x which is an entirely different beast that still on v1 so that some of these numbers may be slightly skewed because of that but uh, yeah, so so the the answer is I think from a, a structural point of view, design point of view, there's no 10x improvement for liquidity provider to to migrate from V1 from V1 to V2. I think the bigger driver will be volumes and the ability of Uniswap the Uniswap team to really get V2 integrated into many DApps into many other uh, ecosystems, and by doing that, like move the volume. Uh, of transaction from V1 to V2 at that point volume will mean fees and so 
fees is basically the component of return for liquidity providers. And so at that point, you know, that will be a transition. So we'll need to see how this pan out. It's a very interesting case in DeFi. They, the, the team doesn't have private keys. And so that's totally down to the game theory, to the uh, you know, in incentive structure uh, for the LPs to decide whether they want to migrate or not. And so I, I think it's a very organic type of, uh, type of movement. And uh, uh, I, I like this very much. And, and uh, yeah, well, it was, it was going to be interesting to see what happens. So that's all for today, guys. Hope you, um, hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, thoughts, a lot to discuss as usual, you can find my uh, handles, uh, Twitter handles and uh, Telegram right in the tool uh, here and here if you want to follow, if you want to uh, connect directly with me. Until next time, have a great one, guys. Talk soon.